In this video, we're going to explore the new addition of Instant Meshes integration into 3D Coat. It's a standalone auto retopple engine that has been added as a separate option to the default 3D Coat auto retopple tool set. The reason it's being added is that it offers an alternative in the rare cases where the 3D Coat algorithm struggles or will fail to create a satisfactory result. When the models are prepared properly and the estimated number of polygons are appropriate for the level of complexity, 3D Coat's default algorithm is generally the best option to start with. It does a much better job of producing clean and virtually all quads topology. However, in some small number of cases, it can be a bit fussy. As you see in this example, some of the attempts are fairly close and some are not. So I'm going through several attempts as you may notice, the bottom side is more complex than on the top side, and the default algorithm is struggling with that just a bit. So I'm probably going to have to add some guides to help it along. Overall, this attempt came out about the way I expected. However, on the very ends here at the bottom, it's rather thin and that can cause issues with the auto retopple algorithm in many circumstances. So I could either tweak the auto retopple result or to improve it even more, I could go back to the sculpt workspace, thicken the object just a bit by right mouse button clicking over the layer, adding some thickening, and then restart the auto retopple process. But here, I'm gonna go ahead and start instant meshes by right clicking and then choosing auto retopple and then instant meshes auto mode. It's in real time now, it's not sped up. What you're seeing at this moment with the progress bar is 3D Coat is evaluating the voxel object. If it's over a certain resolution, it's going to decimate it before it initiates the instant meshes engine. We are not going to see the decimated version in the viewport, but 3D Coat will store it internally in order to send it to the instant meshes engine. Once it completes this step, the next thing we'll see is a pop-up asking for the estimated poly count. Once we click OK, the first thing you'll notice is how quickly it solves the solution. Just about six or seven seconds. Right away, we can tell it has an enormous speed advantage and it also generates a relatively good mesh without having to apply any guides. This time I'm gonna right click and choose Instant Mesh's manual mode. And it's going to go through the same first two steps, but then it's going to bring up the Instant Meshes UI, as you'll see here momentarily. Now inside the interface, I'll click in the viewport. That'll allow me to zoom in, and under Orientation Field, I'll click Solve. You'll see a general flow of the topology, but we can click on the little comb icon to apply some guides. Now the orientation field is more of a rough draft mode, if you will, and the position field is a little bit more refined, meaning it will show you a real preview of what the mesh will look like to which you can apply further guides in that mode as well if you want to tweak it even further. I'll just continue adding guides until I'm content with the polyflow. One of the benefits to instant meshes that you may have noticed by now is its interactivity as you apply the guides. You'll notice that it quickly updates. Let's go ahead and click this little comb icon so that we can clear the guides and inspect our mesh. If you don't uncheck that, for some reason it will not allow you to orbit about the model. I'm not sure why, but it doesn't. If you need to change the poly count, you can adjust the target vertex count here in the middle. I'll check sharp creases because this is a hard surface model. And then I'll click solve for position field. You can see this is a more accurate preview of the final result. I'm gonna click on the paintbrush in the position field to apply another guide just to see if it will help improve this any at all. Now let's click export mesh, extract mesh, Clicking pure quad mesh will merely subdivide the model so that the triangles at the termination points will become quads, and then click save to send the mesh to 3D Coat. Overall, it did a relatively good job, but 
As you might notice, it leaves a number of triangles or poles within the mesh. However, there are a number of use cases where perfect topology is not necessary. In such cases, instant meshes might be your preferred method. So that's a quick overview of instant meshes integration in 3D Coat. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.